For all the pregame chatter about how Donald Trump would dominate the debate without being on stage, the Fox News moderators didn't ask about him until the second hour, as we noted, when this happened. If former President Trump is convicted in a court of law, would you still support him as your party's choice? Please raise your hand if you would. Fascinating moment, Mary Catherine. Uh, Ron DeSantis and others looking to their left, I think. Uh, well, what is everyone else saying? But most of the candidates, except for Chris Christie, obviously, said they'd back Trump even if he's a convicted felon. And relatively few people in the media said, wow, that's yeah. pretty remarkable. Have we become ignored to this with all the indictments? Yes, I think maybe we have. Um, and look, they've all signed this pledge that says they'll, pr uh, that they'll support right. the eventual nominee. But I, and I may be out of step with the GOP electorate on this too, and I'm open to that, but I would like a presidential candidate who is open to new information. Like, we're not sure exactly what he would be convicted on, and I understand that the, both the media and sometimes the legal system have been unfair to this former president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get that, but uh, I haven't seen it happen yet, so I would like to know that we can act according to those facts as they come in. Right. Kevin, the other candidates, I thought, came up with 37 different reasons, 37 different ways, I should say, of ducking the question. Oh, we have to look forward. It's up to the voters, a new generation of leadership, you know, all those taglines. And my question is, if they're dancing around this, this question about what if Donald Trump is convicted and, you know, even possibly sentenced, and, you know, he obviously is entitled to presumption of innocence and may not be convicted, but... If they don't won't go with Trump directly, how do they expect to beat him? Why wouldn't people just vote for Donald Trump? I mean, Howie, that's, that, that's the great yeah, question, I right? I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out either. And it's a redo of, of 2020, and or, I'm sorry, 2016, right, where you have all these candidates campaigning for the number two spot without taking on uh, the, the person with that massive lead as Donald Trump has. Uh, and we're just going to see the same dynamic play out. And, and I don't know if, it, you know, Vivek is, you know, auditioning to be Commerce Secretary or, you know, uh, you know Nikki's trying to be Secretary of State or something yeah. like this with this dynamic playing out. But... If you want to take on Joe Biden, you got to go through Donald Trump first, and right. all of them are holding their powder dry, right. for the yeah. most part, except Chris Christie, to your point. Much easier to attack uh, Joe Biden, but uh, as you say, you got to win the nomination. So I want to play some sound, because right at the day after the debate was the day that Donald Trump decided to surrender uh, in Fulton County, Georgia, with the fourth indictment. And, you know, it was like somebody flipped a switch. All of a sudden, all the coverage, it was like, what debate? It's like, oh, here's the motorcade. Oh, here's the aerial shot. Oh, here he is getting off the plane. And this is what the former president said uh, after his arraignment. I thought the election was a rigged election, a stolen election, and I should have every right to do that. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. So Anderson Cooper on CNN said, well, he commented on the tarmac. Uh, he continued to make dishonest claims. It's not worth hearing. Right. Now, CNN did play some excerpts later. MSNBC didn't play anything. So you got, you know, it was like 24 hours of just beating up on Trump. And then he doesn't get one minute, and this is the same thing with the last arraignment, uh, to give his side and say he's innocent. Uh, this is one of my issues with a lot of modern media and with, uh, frankly, a lot of my friends on the left is like, more speech is better, actually. You can refute his speech, and people did on air. Right. So just have him have his say. If he's going to lead your broadcast for the yes. entirety of the day, right. have him have his say. Uh, Rachel Maddow also said that there's a cost to us as a news organization of knowingly broadcasting untrue things. I would like someone to send that memo to Rachel Maddow of the uh, Russiagate years, because <laughs> that's an important fact to know. Yeah, I would just add that, you know, he is the leading candidate for the Republican nomination for president. And if you simply say, we're not going to show him because we think he's a liar, what does that say about your news organization? And again, they could spend the other 23 hours and 58 minutes attacking him. All right. Everybody's talking about the mugshot. Let's put it up. Um, it's been described by some as a death stare there we see it's been reported that he sort of practiced this on the plane he wanted to send a message uh what is it that's so compelling to the media about that image well speaking of a man who understands the attention economy he goes and turns himself in on this i believe yeah. he had till friday and he's like i think i'll go yeah. thursday because then i'll stomp all over these stories right. look let it be on the record that if it should come to it i will be a smiling mugshot <laughs> yeah. but i don't think that was correct for trump trump is trying to send a message that he is menacing that he's being treated unfairly and that he will have retribution whether he has the discipline or has ever shown the discipline uh to actually have that retribution in some sort of legal manner uh, is another question. Uh, but it's funny to me that anyone thought that he would be sort of 
put in his place by this. Yeah. Have you met this person? Have you been paying <laughs> attention the entire time? Of course he's going to sell it on T-shirts. Of course he's going to capitalize yeah, on it. Yeah, they're that. selling the merchandise. And, and, Kevin, some people are saying this will define him 100 years from now. Of course, the funny thing is, if you hate Trump and think he's a crook, uh, you look at it and you say, this is awful. But if you like Trump, it seems like a, the ultimate in defiance. Exactly. It's a badge of honor for a lot of his supporters that are already on mugs and T-shirts yeah. and things like that. But this, I think, goes to the, the idea of what media, uh, what Trump is doing. It's a media plan for his legal defense. It's all a communication strategy. It's not a legal defense. You know, it's also his, not a campaign. Exactly. And his lawyers probably were not super happy with his statement on the tarmac, for example. Why not? Right. Uh, continuing to talk about uh, the, the case uh, without a kind oh. of a filter through right. a legalese kind of mentality. So he has continued to play up this communication strategy in the media with regard to all of his defense rather than an actual sound legal strategy. And we'll see if it, it works out. Right. And Trump is reported to be very happy with that image. And, uh, you know, it's the classic Rorschach test. You know, if you love him or hate him, you interpret it differently. Uh, but, you know, he's criticized uh, Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis for uh, starting her own fundraising effort just before the indictment dropped. On the other hand, he's raised a lot of money off these indictments, so it's fair to point that out. Mary Catherine Ham, Kevin Walling, great to have you both in studio. Up next, Vivek Varmaswamy may be a rising star, but what's he doing floating 9-11 conspiracy theories?